Welcome back to Bros in a Landfill. Today we're doing something a little bit different. We're doing a discussion topic. I have no idea how long this will go. So a podcast that isn't a podcast. It's totally not a podcast. Um, and don't even call it that. This is this is your um, Bros in a Landfill news. Um, we might we, we got a shop, whatever we're gonna call this. This is like non-episodic. We've done like we've we've done short form talk th- discussions in the past. Uh, if you probably haven't seen them, if you unless you're like a mega fan, but um yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe this show is called like News in a Landfill Something. because like we're probably late to the punch. Yeah, well, like newspapers being pulled out of the garbage. Yeah, well, like um, we'll like rebrand it three or four times. The this is more just a freeform discussion show where um, there's been something that's interesting that happened recently, and one of us wants to talk about it. Um, yeah, in this case, it's me, um, because um, well, recently Sonic X Shadow Generations was announced. Um, plus we learned a little bit about. Um, Sonic Movie 3. So um, I've been having countless intrusive thoughts about Shadow the Hedgehog. Um, and I feel like a bad person for inflicting this compulsion on the people around me. <laughs> but if it's in a YouTube video, then people click on it by choice. People who are just as obsessive as me are going to like look this up on purpose. I thought I was the one that was obsessed with metrics. Uh, you're the one that earlier <laughs> said that you were just this is just a fun experimental talking ground with your bros. Well, like, I just, like, there, there's, the people in my real life, that they, they put up with a lot already. <laughs> uh, so I just wanted to talk a little bit, bit about Shadow. So I want to say that I have, like, a, a series of notes, but I actually have a notepad document that is just a huge text wall. It's completely out of order with no focus whatsoever. Um, but here is a, l- let me attempt to do something uh resembling a point so i've seen uh here and there a bit of discussion on like are we just going to retread shadow's character arc and storyline again um because in sonic x shadow generations which is like a re-release of sonic generations with a shadow campaign added in on the side which is crazy um apparently according to steam and from what we can see in the trailer it's about shadow um stopping black doom again and like re going through his past reliving his painful memories and whatnot and so people are like um do we really have to do all this again like have shadow confront his past in the arc or whatever um and my answer is fucking yes and here's why um no one knows what the fuck is happening with this character like for one of the most famous Sonic characters and like having a strangely like high amount of like public knowledge, he's an incredibly inaccessible character. Um, like I don't, I was thinking about this earlier and I just feel like it's not possible to know and fully understand Shadow's lore while also being like a normal person. Do you understand what I mean? Like, like, like Shadow is kind of less of like a, a character and more of like a, a special interest. I think knowing about Shadow is like a hobby. <laughs> because I mean, I mean Shadow, Shadow like, like as a character kind of just exists as a foil to Sonic in whatever form the game or show or car- whatever like is. I mean, yeah, he, I, he does like he, he, but he he has his, but he has his own interesting lore, but like he's like so much of his character is just on the surface is just like i'm and like i'm edgy sonic it, it is fascinating because like because this is part of what has been racing around in my brain because like they wrote so much bullshit for him that like it's clearly an important part of like the intention of the character but like on the other hand he is very um aesthetically driven like I think the reason why he's so popular, even though people don't know his backstory, is because, like, I mean, look at him. Like, he's just this, like, embodiment of, like, cool angst and that kind of thing. Like, um, hot topic or or whatever it is. Like, for all the same reasons, people kind of mock the idea of this edgy character. Like, that is his appeal. Um, But, like, I do think that if they want to use him in an interesting way in a story 
or like as a character who like has any context in any story or universe or any motivation whatsoever they have to go over his backstory at least a little bit because it informs everything and the fact is i don't think there's ever been like a solid piece of shadow media that is just like consumable to a normal person that you can just like play this and you'll just get shadow like you have to play like three games eight times um and then you have to find the original japanese translation and then like he's a great character to to watch a 50 hour video essay about well i mean like his his like his character like is the edgy character like that edgy backstory is as much as the aesthetic like that unapproachable edgy backstory is part of the aesthetic of being an edgy character like there really is no other character in the sonic like when i say when i say sonic series i mean specifically like in the mainstream stuff sure like or in the games because like if we can go into like some of the the side content like the comics and stuff and there's like cool stories being told there but if you're looking at like in the mainstream games, mm. the only character that ever has a real backstory that is apparent for any of the viewers is Shadow. Like everybody else is just kind of whatever they need to be at any time. They, it's like they mostly, kind of like, just a, exist. Of the- um, I mean, Knuckles has one when they remember, but it's it's not like very in depth or anything. And I don't think like even Sager well, has their notes straight like, on it. Uh, his his backstory exists mainly just to justify his character in three, you know. Sure, like, I mean I, that, that's a, well. Like the thing is, like it, it's Knuckles' story is or or lore or whatever is like it's pretty simple and it's communicated effectively within the games. Or yeah, at least I guess. Well, I guess. Well, I guess also like Knuckles' lore in a lot of ways is just Sonic the series lore. Yeah, like, that's true. Very much. You, it's very much like, oh, this is like the history of like the Master Emerald and like the connection with the Chaos Emeralds and this ancient civilization or whatever. Yeah, that, like, actually, Knuckles that's is. a great point because when you play Sonic Adventure, it's like it's ostensibly about the Knuckles tribe or whatever. But Knuckles has like nothing to do with the plot. Like he's just, I'm just looking for my fucking shards, man. Like, <laughs> um, you know, he doesn't really have the big moments or anything, but I, I feel like I'm I'm getting off course because it's easy yeah, to talk. Yeah, it's about like Sonic. a lot of like sh- sh- like a lot of Shadow's character is like this edgy character with a tragic, edgy backstory, and a lot of that really comes from the Shadow game. Like so much of the color of that backstory and the details that we get, like like the Shadow the Hedgehog game, like kind of is, like is the embodiment of like the edgy aesthetic, like this like chuny mm. ass. And like trauma, like traumatic um, backstory, like in a lot of ways, like Shadow is like the a, like the the, the typical um, teenage role play character. Yes, like yes, he appeals to the exact spirit. Um, uh, it's like I, I just think that like if they're going to use him in like a new story and like put him in the game, like there's just so little to work with if you don't like. Because, I mean, it's not like we need to be seeing Black Doom every other game or whatever, but, like, I think, like, I think what is uh, uh, Shadow about? What does he do? Uh, like, what is he s- angsting about? Like, I feel like this stuff matters uh, or should matter. And, and so I, I will, I will to be, batting for generations a little bit here, like, in counter to this. It's like, that is the entire point of generations is to just, like, hmm. be, like, a nostalgia trip for these past games. Like... Like I, I know we're getting a new shadow story somewhat like here, but that's in the context of generations, which is already kind of like this blast from the past. Like mm. there's no new story or character development really happening here. It's just like, hey, this thing happened in the past. Do you remember this thing that happened in the past? Yeah, no, it, it is a logical place to put uh, a recap story like this without it feeling like just a complete retread. Um, but yeah, I get. I guess all I'm saying is I think that this is a great opportunity to get at least some percentage of that ridiculous yeah. backstory into the minds of like well, somewhat normal people or, or, or like new kids just getting into the series. Well, and you know? also, all, and also think about it this way. It's like, we've got Sonic three coming out, like Sonic the movie three yeah. coming out, which is going to have shadow in it. So like, this is a great way to get people like introduced to shadow as a character before the movie comes out. Um, if they, I presumably if they're making a Sonic adventure three, um, 
Mm. There's no way they can get away without having Shadow as a character and continuing his story in that game. No, there's clearly a, a dedicated effort to make Shadow a thing again, which I really appreciate. And they did a great job with Knuckles like a couple of years ago. Like, they really did a great job wrangling him into something in the movie and then in Frontiers and like his cartoon, uh, like short kind of thing. Like, I think they really rescued this character that has like um, been ill defined and kind of confusing and mostly defined by memes for many years. And that now they're doing it again. Um, but I do think Shadow is a more difficult character to wrangle. But I mean, yeah, as this conversation has shown, he is a character that sort of works on a surface level as well as. Um, like on this deep lore level i just hope we can get the best of all worlds because i think it would be cool if like um i mean i don't know i'm a huge sonic nerd and i, I like the yeah. entire history of the franchise to like still play a role in some way if possible um yeah so bring back as, shadows of alien dad or whatever like as, as much as i liked generations as a game and as much as i'm glad to see there's new content Honestly, I kind of wish they just did a remake or an HD upgrade of Shadow the Hedgehog. That would be, be interesting. I don't think they're willing to like. It's it's shocking oh, no, that they got Black oh, they're Doom absolutely back not. in. Oh, like they wouldn't like, do it. But I, I'm I'm st I'm still surprised that they're bringing stuff from Shadow the Hedgehog in two generations. Like, don't get me wrong. That like I'm that surprises me. It, like, well, I think it's cool. Like, th this is another. Like, one of my notes in my deep, deep tangled rat king of shadow ideas is that like, it's really the perfect time in the Sonic um, in the direction of a Sonic franchise to bring something like shadow back in properly. Because like, like after like unleashed, basically they did a big tonal shift and everything became very, they really leaned out of the anime stuff and like into the sort of, um, you know, more serious storylines and made a bunch of like, more kind of approachable mascot kind of stories like Sonic Colors and Sonic Lost World and like mm -hmm. Sonic Boom and like this whole like yeah. s several year long period that like is quite um, uh, notorious among uh, people who have been in the Sonic too long like me. But like in recent years, like they've really been starting to like lean back into all that stuff that they were trying to escape for fear of it being like too cringe or like um, not yeah. palatable to the the current game is like we've gone to the point where we have sonic frontiers as we talked about in our um episode about that um a while ago where like you know the the cartoon characters are having like wistful conversations about how their lives have changed and shit and like also there's like edgy hardcore you know um rock music in the boss battles again so it's like this is we're we're getting back into that kind of narrative point where a character like shadow can even work because shadow has no place in a game like Sonic Colors because like nothing about him would be allowed to shine in that rendition of the franchise. Yeah, I yeah yeah I, yeah I, I I think part of it like there's like there's just a I think there's just a big tonal shift in like the general audience in general and what they expect from games and media like. I kind of understand why they shifted away from the more anime tone, like in the two thousand, like yeah. mid two thousands. They were getting like, slammed for it in reviews all the time. People thought yeah, it was uh, yeah, it's like ridiculous. Well, it, well, it's like anime just wasn't as popular back then. Like I think like they really took a turn to try to be taken a bit more seriously, and then that was middling, and then they started to make things more like oh, we'll make this like a kids thing, like we're gonna approach. Yeah, well, they're looking for some kind of identity yeah. that made sense. I mean, like. Uh, Sonic wasn't the only game going super edgy for a while, you know, like it yeah. was kind of um, hilariously common that like, you know, there's like but, Jack and Daxter and then Jack 2 or there's like Prince of Persia 2 where like everything but, gets really edgy. But you, you want to know something like I, I, one of the big things I think has changed the algorithm. What's that? The generation of kids that grew up with Sonic Hero, like, well, like that gener like that shadow generation. It's like it's working now. Like it's like we have the money to go out and buy those games, right? So like, and no, that that's actually a, a fantastic point. That I think is a big part of the puzzle here. Like, it's been really cool seeing things that I feel nostalgic about. Like, everyone's complained there's always nostalgia um, products coming out, and there's no new ideas. I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, that's true. But now that like nostalgia bait is now like mining directly from shit that I was into, I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, but like think think of it this way: it's like the, the Sonic took that turn to like colors and generations initially, which was a bit more torn, like like a bit more like the um, focus, like the two D, like oh, we're we're returning to form of like classic Sonic. We're mm, we're shunning mm. this like three D era. Like we're go, we're returning to classic mm. Sonic. And that was like the time when the people who grew up playing Sonic One, like the the Dreamcast games, when they were finally becoming like yeah. old enough to really like buy their own games. And then like five, six, seven years afterwards, it's like we got a whole new generation of people who grew up with a different version of Sonic. So like and your target audience when you're making games for Sonic is like whatever kids were playing like 15 years ago that's yeah because like it's who are now adults it's it's old enough to work but young enough to not have kids right you know that does make sense that probably is a a sizable demographic for um at least players of sonic games it's like it's the demographic of people with the most money Mm. and like well the most the the most disposable income i would say yeah because like once you once you have kids, you don't have as much disposable income, and you don't have as much time to play games. Mm. Like when you have work, it's like oh, you work, but you have free time after work, or you might want to go back to the nostalgic days of when you were a kid and enjoy what you like. Yeah. And yeah. for someone like me who grew up with Shadow the Hedgehog, I'm like, I I will rebuy this Generations like remake. Like I I, I enjoy Generations. I actually much preferred the 3DS Generations over. The, the that, console that one. is a boiling take but continue I'm, i am not i i know i am not the only person who thinks this either too that's really the, um that that's got to be another episode what the hell yeah um but it's, i, res- it's I respect like, it i respect it no it's it's the sonic it's the sonic rush gameplay uh fair um i i think i think for me with generations um like the 3d versions of the stages I didn't find, I found just kind of like downgraded versions of the versions of the stage that I grew up with. Really? That's Where, interesting. Well, because like it was, it was like, it was taking like this 3D platformer, which was kind of like, which I enjoyed growing up with. Like, I'm not a big platformer fan, but I liked these stages. Like, they were kind of like nostalgic for me. Like, I grew, these are like some of the first games I've ever played. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, so it's like Escape from the City. Um, like, changing that to the colors 3d style of like the dash and it's a bit more no that makes sense like I, the, the gameplay style of i mean it's it's completely valid to prefer the adventure controls and so, approach so like having that change to like having the 3ds like having like all those like old stages just be 2d side scrollers felt like it was something more akin to a d make of those stages. right no that's an interesting way of putting it because yeah I, I also thought it was really cool to see something like emerald coast and and 2d side scrolling like that was quite novel and and yeah you're not immediately comparing it to like is this as cool as the last version it's like it's yeah it reminds me like when i was a kid like um there are a lot of projects i don't think any of them got finished but like of people trying to turn ocarina of time into like a link to the past engine um or like 2d top down kind of style and i always thought that was really cool um but anyway i i feel like we're we're going somewhat off of whatever point we're on yeah, no, no. I think I think the point is like I think it's it's cool that we're that they're bringing Shadow back into generations. Definitely. Um, I don't know if you had any more like, notes on the matter. I, I I guess to summarize, I was mostly just saying it's it's cool that Shadow is back, and I think ba- kind of recapping who Shadow is and what his deal is is a good idea, um, because that way, like, there'll be something remotely consumable. Um, but at the same time, I agree with you that um, a lot of his appeal is just kind of on the surface. And so who knows how deep they'll get? Um, I mean, like, if there's one thing Sega is very good at, it is it's aesthetic. Like, yeah, so no, much of, like, what they, they put out is just pure, raw aesthetic. And that's why some of their iconic series have lasted so long, is that they've tapped into these different generations of people and what, like, appeals to them, like, what's hip. And yeah, I'll just say like, okay, just as one last little note of conversation, we've already been going for a little while, which is uh, shocking mm-hmm. uh, that flew by. But um, I was talking to my, my friend Jen about um, how some media is very character driven. And it's interesting how like some media is character driven in the way that like it's because the characters are really deep and compelling and fascinating. You know, like if you're watching like 
you know, Game of Thrones or something, you're probably like, man, all these people are so interesting and they're so well portrayed. So it's so thoughtful and all that kind of stuff. Um, but then you look at something like um, Dragon Ball or something. And it's like, ah, yeah, I lo- like the plots, whatever. But I love hanging out with Pilaf. And it's like, who's Pilaf? It's like, oh, well, he's this little blue. He's, he's this little blue guy. And it's like, what is he? Uh, what's his motivation? I'm like, I don't know. Uh, he's just this guy and he, he wants to take over the world. Why? I don't know. He's friends with a dog though. Who who is this dog character? Uh, I don't know. He just he's just there. <laughs> like and I feel like Sonic characters are like that as well all the time. Um so like just I just want to see my favorite scrimblows, you know. There's just yeah, something I about mean, them. Yeah, I there's there's something about Blorbos, you know. <laughs> Some there's <laughs> something about Blorbos. Yeah, no, I I I I think just sometimes and like, and, and this, and a lot of, a lot of these feelings of aesthetic come from like these deep seated things that we grew up with. Mm. And that there's like this familiarity, this nostalgic like feeling. Um, they were part of a part of our lives as our tastes were developing. And there's just a comfy comfortness. <laughs> well, like the, just, the, it's, the, it's not even, I mean, I think but, truly uh, there's a lot in a visual well, but, design, you know? Even just the way well, that yeah, a character but, is drawn is like, has like an it, energy it, it, to it. Like, like, but like, but we all like part of that's like we're all going to take into different energies differently. Like everybody mm. has like different aesthetics that they vibe with. Like, I, I I think there's just I think at the end of the day, some days like there's some times where we want to like engage in a good story, like like just take in like ooze, like be able to think about stuff. Other days it's like you've had enough. Mm. You just want to. Snuggle up with something comfy. Yeah, um, you just want to snuggle up with Shadow the Hedgehog, and like something thinking. comfy and familiar that like you had good dopamine release when like in the past. Mm-hmm. Your brain remembers that this gives dopamine release, and you see it, and it's like, oh, this is good thing, dopamine release. There's like no substance or value specifically to the reason why that dopamine releases. It's like, it's like, I mean, again. And, there, and there's going to be, like, connecting. So, like, I get a lot of, like, emotional resonance connection to, like, music from games and shows mm. from moments. So, like, I can put on a, like, some of my favorite music is always going to be tied to, like, the openings of a show or a game or from, like, these dramatic moments in, mm. in media. And, like, sometimes I can just put those on and it will trigger. I mean, and I'm sure most people can relate to that. No, well, it's, like, like nostalgia is a special thing. Like, the fact that um this... Like whether it's a character design or a song, like it's a, uh, it's a something that just sort of peaks the memory of like a time in your life and experience you were having, and like a lot of um, I don't know, like it's, I mean, <laughs> this is kind of a hardcore place to go with it, but it's like it's it reminds me of how like people like dementia can sort of like still like remember their favorite song or something, or like be kind of like have their brain reawakened a bit by um that prompt well it's like our 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 brains are very complex fascinating they're not just like pure logic machines like there's Mm. it takes in like really the brain like the brain is designed to like taking good stimuli remember good stimuli taking bad stimuli remember bad stimuli Mm. and like associate with those things and that's all part of the reason why we all have such different subjective tastes yeah, and I, I think it would be it. You could imagine looking at that cynically, but like I think it's kind of, kind of magic more than anything. Oh um, yeah, and I, well, I think it, it means it, a lot that like that seemingly innocuous symbols of greater times like uh, mean so much to us. Uh, no, I mean, and a lot of it just like ties back to just base human connection. You know, mm. like there's when we're when you're young and you're taking in a lot of information, you're trying to figure out who you are in the world. There's a lot of unknowns, mm. um, like and you like you take like and you attach yourself to things, like even mm. if you grow out of them to an extent as you like get older, like there's going to be like there's this core in your brain of this this past human connection, and it's like and, and that's what art is. Art is just humans connecting with each other. Like there, even though like there's like a commercial aspect to a lot of art. At the end of the day, it's humans communicating to each other in ways that um, are creative. I, I 100% agree. Uh, art is is a way to communicate, basically. And um, 
you know, I, I don't think any amount of um, corporate, like um, the awkward relationship with capitalism can dull that part of, because I mean, because art is amazing and powerful. I mean, I'd, but I mean, like at an ex, at an ex, to an extent, like, like, I think in some ways, like we can, we can like joke about like the markets are capital. Like, like there's, there's bad things with any economic thing, but like, Without like the market behind um, art, like there would be no m- medium for like artists to like live a life as an artist. Like, I mean, look, I, like, like I, I, art and business I know, are it's, always it's, gonna have to do an awkward dance together, and uh, like. Well, but my I think, my point is the, that like people get cynical about art because of its relationship to capital. But well, like, I think I, well, I. I, I I was like, I was like, I was talking more. I actually think, I think, I think that like, it's actually like, let me say that about the best way to put this. I, I think the fact that art can be tied to capital is, is part of what makes like, I guess the, the value, like the value of art is something that's very hard to like, nail down in a tangible way mm. if you want to break if you want to break the world down into logical structures that's like okay we need food we need um shelter we need this or that um art doesn't necessarily fall into a pure logical structure of what the world needs mm. but like as humans we cannot function without that level of communication and art is able to um convey so many thoughts and um and ideas in a very efficient way, more so than just like giving somebody a lecture or mm-hmm. just like saying like, there's, there's so much we can convey with art, but that conveyance isn't something that is easily. It's not quantifiable. Um, it's not quantifiable, which like in some ways is what makes it awkward with capital, but also kind of like makes its reliance with capital. Cause if we didn't have capital there'd be no way for us to measure art in a way that can act, could actually like resonate with like people or give it the chance to resonate with people. I mean, there's definitely strengths and weaknesses to like, like, oh, yeah. like I, I don't think that, um, that capital or, or business is completely antithetical to art. I think it's like a, it's a kind of toxic relationship that still sort of works you know yeah like they both get something out of it but they don't really understand each other on like a on a deep level um yeah <laughs> that it, it, it goes into like a whole, this whole like other like meta like conversation of like like the like the value of art then you have like niches and like like i think to to an degree like having an outlet where art like artists can have like maybe like make money for like a larger wider group that's less niche um gives more opportunities for them to just make the art for niche or audiences and things that resonate with them specifically. Cause like if you're able to just focus on your art and make money off your art, that gives you more time and tools to be able to just work on your craft and your art, as opposed to like someone that has to like work like eight hours a day and then like make time for their art afterwards. Yeah. It's, uh... No, but then again, there's, there's, it's, it's, it's Yeah. <laughs> I wish I had more time to write. That's what I'm saying. I, I work all day and then I wish I had more time to write. I wish I could just be like, hey, here's the thing I wrote that's totally like not like um, using other people's like uh, trademarks and copyrights. It's This is like my fan work thing. No, Take, I well, yeah. I, I wish you had more time for art too. Um, yeah, I don't remember how we got on this train exactly. Yeah, but, probably. I I might cut it. Who knows? <laughs> but the, but no, it's it's cast. okay. But like, I don't know. Like, I would love to. It it feels like artists have a hard time just like fitting into a structured society. Um, you know, like how am I meant to like feed my my wife and children and my 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 seven nephews? But also write an extensive Shadow the Hedgehog fan fiction. Exactly. Now, now, like, yep. But like, hey, look, we don't have to wait any longer because we're finally getting Sonic X Shadow. Let's fucking go. I can't yeah. believe they called uh, it that. 
Yeah, like so, like um, like I think I think we could like leave off. These are my final thoughts. Um, uh, for our, for Sh- Sonic X Shadow, I um posted this on Ace Attorney Online a few days ago. I I think yeah, a few days ago. Okay. Um, th- did you see did you see my post on Ace Attorney Online about uh Sonic the Hedgehog? Uh, or Sonic X Shadow. I don't think so. Well, maybe take it. Maybe take a take a pull it up. Oh, I I I'm opening it. Okay, okay. Ace Attorney Online. Ah oh, man, what, I forget like, that there's like for another sure. site called Ace Attorney Online. A A Online dot F R. The site of fan cases of Ace Attorney stuff that I participate in, and I make fan cases sometimes. It's ridiculous that like there is another thing called Ace Attorney Online. I feel like I remember like when it was coming out, people were like, "Can you call something else?" And they're like, "Uh, no." That that was like literally like my first. I think I was like the first, like one of the first people that posted on the court records forum of that. I'm like, there is literally already a thing called Ace Attorney Online. You should change this. And I think they kind of changed it to Attorney Online, which isn't much better. Uh, okay. It's like, yeah. Let's see. I, I found your comment. I'm pleased to know that Sega has finally listened to the Sonic fans. We've been speculating for two decades on the subtle hints of their true feelings for one another since Sonic Adventure 2. And to have this confirmation after all this time makes this one of the greatest moments in gaming history. Completely agree. Um, we just, we need it on screen. We need it, like, we need uncomfortable close-up. Or else, uh, like, I if, if they're charging full price, they better fucking kiss. Yeah. I, I, I want them to take, like, I don't know if like Jen's posted that image elsewhere, like on a place that can be like easily like uh, fucking credited. Oh, but, like it's on her Twitter, I think. Oh my God. We got, we got to, we'll, we'll, we'll toss that up. Um, <laughs> That's just and, on like, the screen we'll the toss entire it up time. Uh, with Jen's permission, of course. Of course. Well, um, what a what a treat anyway thanks guys for uh, um being on this yeah these are our thoughts on sonic sonic uh, yes yeah, so these are thoughts on sonic x um shadow generations the um i can't i i just sega is so bold and inclusive to finally like make this reality the reality that we've always known yeah i mean like it's 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 an open secret like like we all feel it in our bones yeah um, but graphics have finally caught up to the. <laughs> yeah, cut this. I mean, you, you can't expect you, you you can't expect the Dreamcast to be able to capture the the lustful looks they give each other. Straight up, like that thing, like screeches as you turn it on. Like I think it would like overheat and explode if like if they really showed off just how hot things can get. Um, I'm gonna hit the stop button <laughs> on Audacity. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye.